Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And we begin with a southwest Detroit family rushed to the hospital after an apartment catches fire. This is on Cypress Street just south of Michigan Avenue. Mother of, and two of her children got out safely, but when firefighters arrived, there was still an infant trapped in the second floor unit. The infant that was on the second floor is unknown whether or not um, there was any smoke uh, inhalation, but the child was breathing. They put the ladder up through the second floor in order to initiate rescue, but the companies also went in through the front door. The child and the firefighter came out through the front door. Brave work as always. A furnace is uh, believed to have caused the fire. The mother and three children now being treated for smoke inhalation at the hospital. Now to our other top story, a murder suspect on the run tonight. January 11, 2018, in the course of a robbery at the University Green Apartments in Ypsilanti, Marissa Edmonds and her boyfriend were shot at point blank range. He survived. She died almost instantly. Well, since then, her family has gone through endless heartache trying to get justice. Jason Colthorpe here to explain how the man who was once under arrest and denied bond is on the run tonight. Jason. Yeah, Kim, forget for a moment that this family has been waiting years for just a trial to begin. They had to see this suspect who had an extensive prior criminal record first be set free and now tonight is on the run in violation of those bond details and now they're worried they may never get justice. His whole life he's been a criminal, a violent criminal. Orlando Whitfield had only been out of jail for 60 days when 25 year old Marissa Edmonds was murdered. He was caught 10 days later and he's now been charged with killing her for three and a half years. It gave us somewhat comfort knowing that he was behind bars. Even though it doesn't bring my sister back, it gave us some comfort that we knew where he was. Amanda Edmonds and her family have endured several continuances for various reasons, including COVID. Citing his length of time behind bars while maintaining his innocence, Judge Carol Kuhnke released him on house arrest with a tether a year ago. What about my family? We didn't ask for my sister to be shot in the face. We didn't ask for any of this. But yet he chose to do it and we're the ones suffering while he gets to live this life. Then yesterday, a detective alerted the family Whitfield had done what they expected all along. He cut off his tether and was nowhere to be found. Amanda's family is afraid, but she's angry. Beyond angry. It's ridiculous that she allowed him out to begin with. He's on trial for murder of a 25 year old woman. What in your right mind would make you think he would get out and do the right thing? Now it's believed Sheffield first left town, then cut off the tether. Uh, police obviously don't want to speculate on where they think he is. Uh, they're trying to get him back into custody, but they're asking anyone who might know where he is or if they see him to call 911. Devin. And what does the judge have to say about this, Jason, if anything? Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Uh, well, so a year ago, it was last May, uh, this got media attention when the judge was considering and then ultimately did release him. Right. We put in a call to the judge's office then. We got an email response saying the judge does not discuss open cases. We again reached out today and her office told us the exact same thing. Same thing. Back All to right. you. All right, Jason. Well, could Michigan be maskless before July 1st? Governor Gretchen Whitmer is now saying it's possible with the COVID numbers drastically improving. Our Mara McDonald is live downtown tonight. Mara, the lieutenant governor told you we shouldn't be shocked if Michigan rolls back the remaining COVID orders really soon here. Exactly, Kimberly. And, you know, it's interesting to note that Michigan is the only one of its immediate neighbors. And by that, I mean Ohio, Indiana and Illinois that still has any sort of restriction in place. The rest of those states have given up the masks and the occupancy levels. And if you listen to what the governor said today, sure sounds like she's about to change up her plan as well. Take a look. The earlier state guidance had Michiganders who were vaccinated okayed to go maskless with a timeline of July 1st for everybody, regardless of vaccination status, to have zero mask requirement. The governor on the west side of the state today said, she may move that timeline up. I would anticipate whether it's my OSHA or it is the, the next step in returning to normal, uh, we'll probably have something to talk about in the coming days and, and make, some, make some announcements soon. 
Our Midwestern neighbors have done away with mask mandates and occupancy restrictions. We are one of a handful of states across the country who still do have some restrictions in place. Just yesterday, Andrew Cuomo rolled back all the restrictions in New York. We are just a hair above 60% of Michiganders who have had at least one dose of vaccine. The governor had wanted that number to be 70%. It's unclear if we'll ever get there. Still, our case numbers are looking good. We have shown that we'll respond to the reality on the ground of those numbers. And so that's why it is certainly a possibility that we could make changes to the health protocols uh, before July 1st. Back here live, Michigan's COVID case positivity rate over the last seven days, less than 2%. It's good. We're live downtown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. It's good. All right, Mara, thank you. And Michigan also reporting the lowest number of new cases in more than a year today. Yep, state reporting just 179 new cases and four additional deaths over the last 24 hours. Lowest number of new cases since June of 2020. Meanwhile, the state vaccine rate remains at 60.6%. Half of Michiganders age 16 and older are fully vaccinated. And a local four update to a story we brought you last week. A man accused of stealing a $20,000 gold chain at a Detroit gas station is now in custody. 24 year old Jamal Irvin of Detroit is charged in the attack. He's accused of stealing the necklace and bracelet of a gas station customer. You may remember this video. We showed it to you last week. It happened on Warren near West Grand Boulevard. Surveillance video shows the victim walk out of the gas station and then try to run back inside as men grab him and take his jewelry. The victim told us he had just recently won the lottery and had bought the gold chain, the $20,000 gold chain with his $30,000 winnings. The search to find a man con uh, wanted in connection with the death of his wife is now on its second day. We first told you last night that Flat Rock police had identified Amos Lowe as a person of interest after his wife was found dead inside their home. Police haven't named him a suspect, but want to question him. They're asking anyone with information to contact them. Dozens who say they were abused by Dr. Robert Anderson gather in Ann Arbor to call for full transparency from the University of Michigan. The group says a report from a law firm hired by the university that showed complaints against Anderson and the university's alleged failure to act was not enough. They want the university to allow a full investigation to uncover what happened. I call on the U of M Board of Regents to cooperate and to allow Attorney General's office to conduct a true investigation where all questions are not only asked but also answered an investigation where everything is uncovered. For its part, the school released a statement saying the law firm's investigation had full access to all available information. But tomorrow, Michigan's Board of Regents has its regularly scheduled public meeting. Tonight, the House voting to make Juneteenth a federal holiday. It's the first new federal holiday since Martin Luther King Jr. Day was created in 1983. Juneteenth commemorates when the last slaves learned they were free on June 19, 1865. The bill now goes to President Joe Biden's desk to be signed into law. It originally opened in downtown Royal Oak just a few months, believe it or not, before the attack on Pearl Harbor. From midnight movies to art house features, the main art theater has always been a destination for movie lovers. I've loved the place. For now, it's closed and with no plans to reopen. But as our Tim Pampon reports, there's plenty of people trying to save the iconic theater. The lights are on, but there's no films to be seen at the Royal Oak Main Art Theater, a staple in downtown Royal Oak for the last 80 years. The Los Angeles-based Landmark Corporation pulled the plug on operations here leaving the landlord scrambling and movie fans commiserating. It has a tremendous history. My son and I are absolutely devastated at the closing. She's one of a couple dozen residents that came out this evening to strategize and remember the good old days. It was 1941 when the theater opened, made front page news. Yes, there's a lot of history wrapped up in this old building. History that these residents aren't ready to say goodbye to just yet. This has been the main art did for generations, was bring us all together. Jason is one of the main organizers down here. He's watched the rapid development of downtown Royal Oak, including these high-rise condos and apartments. Part of the reason it has seen this development is because of institutions like the Royal Oak Main Art Theater. And if you take away the reasons for people to live here, who's gonna buy these condos? Who's gonna move into these apartments? As life continues to whiz by, 
These folks are asking the city and the landlord to try and preserve the history at 11 Mile and Main. To preserve that uh, flavor that Royal Oak has had for so many years as a place for art and culture. If you want to help this grassroots organization, head over to Click on Detroit. We put a link to their Facebook page. That is the scene in Royal Oak tonight with the night cam. Tim Pamplin, Local 4. We got to strategize. Movie lovers unite. A lot of people have great memories <laughs> oh, I there really for do. sure. I love it. All right, still ahead, a 94 year old woman is forced out of her home. I heard the sign like a bomb's going off. The massive explosion that has her in a shelter. How long it could be before she's allowed to return home coming up. Here, here comes Ben. Devin and Kim, changes on the horizon. First the heat, then the humidity, and the severe threat is going to follow shortly after. We'll run it all down for you coming up. All right, but first, a Macomb County father accused of shooting and killing his daughter's boyfriend. Why police believe he pulled the trigger when we come back.